Hello, Sue O'Leary Hall here, back with you. Um, I've been with the Thornton Peoples today, face to face, finally, which has been lovely. It's the first time I've seen them since September back in school. Um, and what we've been looking at today is how to ensure that the pupils are as well prepared as they possibly can be for the next few weeks running up to the end of the summer term. And the purpose of this vlog is to share with you as parents those key messages so that you are able to, to reinforce those and support the pupils as well as possible at home. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, um, we have GCSE exams being replaced this summer by ongoing teacher assessments. And what that means is that there are lots of chances for pupils to shine. It's not all riding on one final exam. Um, the really important message there though is that pupils need to work steadily and consistently over these coming weeks as those assessments um, will be will be spread out from sort of after Easter all the way up to June. So it's taking a sort of marathon rather than a sprint approach if you like and that's the first message that we've been sharing with the pupils today that actually they need to, to take care of themselves and um, making sure that they are eating healthily um, exercising, sleeping well and just generally looking after themselves physically and emotionally so that they are as, as well equipped as they can be to succeed academically. Um, we've got the Easter holidays coming up and it's really important that, that pupils have some, some breaks in those holidays, that they have a chance to, to decompress and um, get away from the screens if they've spent a lot of time learning online during lockdown and they're obviously they're back in school now um, and they do need to, to just have some things to look forward to over those Easter holidays and over the coming weeks. Um, the weather's better, thank goodness. The last time I was with you, it was snowing outside and now the sun's blazing away out here, which is much better. So it's about getting people outside into the fresh air, getting some exercise and some fresh air. Very importantly, seeing their friends as far as is permissible under, under lockdown restrictions and just trying to make sure that they have some balance between their revision, which will be ongoing, which I'll talk about in a minute, but also some, some downtime and some self-care and decompression as well. Um, the next thing really I want to focus on is the academic side of things. Um, we know from research into to memory for learning in particular, that there are a number of, of things to consider when young people are revising. The first of which is how to organise and prioritise that revision. Um, it's really important that they don't just revise a topic and then think, right, that's finished, that's done and dusted, and then just move on and never come back to that topic. We know that something called spaced retrieval is very, very useful in terms of developing deeper learning in the, the long-term memory. So pupils need to revise a topic and then come back to that learning a week later, a couple of weeks later, a month later, and test themselves again on it and revise any gaps that, that they found that they got, they got stuck with or, or didn't do very well on. And um, it's really important that we, we come back to what we've revised regularly. And that approach is, is actually called interleaving. So it's interleaving topics regularly throughout the revision period. Um, rather than just doing one topic and then leaving it. Okay, so interleaving, coming back and re-revising each topic regularly through the revision period. And it might be that they just do 15 minutes at the start of a revision session where they're recapping a previous topic before moving on to the next one. But that's really important, that returning and recapping on previous topics. Um, just thinking about prioritising as well and organising revision, um, we would really advocate the idea of of what the Americans call eating the ugly frog first. And what I mean by that is that actually we would encourage young people to do the hard stuff first at the start of a revision session, doing the hardest topic or the one they find um, least enjoyable. If they do that at the start while they've got the, the highest level of concentration, um, that would be really sensible rather than leaving the hard stuff to the end when they least feel like it. And then there's a danger they might just put it off and say, oh, I'll do that tomorrow and then tomorrow never comes. So encouraging your, your, your young person to, to do the hard stuff first and then the, the things they enjoy, if they've got a favourite subject or a topic they feel quite confident with, save that for the end of the revision session. Um, we would kind of label that a hot air balloon task because it just lifts your spirits at the end and gives you that um, that feeling of positivity to end on, which is always useful rather than ending when 
end of your revision session when you, you found something really, really tricky and then trying to sleep when you're worrying about it is never a good idea. So do the hard stuff first and the, the easier stuff or the more enjoyable stuff at the end of the revision session in terms of, of their prioritisation. Um, the next thing really is, is to think about how they are ending revision sessions and what time they're ending revision sessions. I would definitely suggest, if, if you can, because this is a marathon, not a sprint, we've got a number of weeks of this coming up. Um, if you're able to encourage your, your young person to, to stop their revision at a sensible time, you know, it might be that they stop at half past eight or at nine at the latest so they can have a proper hour of decompression, ideally away from a screen before settling down to sleep. We know that actually if they're revising late, it's very hard to then settle down to sleep. And if sleep is, is malaffected, then it doesn't matter how long they're spending revising because if they're exhausted, it's not going to be sticking in the long-term memory. The sleep is really, really important. So again, as parents, there's an opportunity to say, actually, you've revised long enough tonight. Now it's time to take a break and start again tomorrow. Um, and actually, in terms of the way that we encourage young people to revise now, um, we know from research that it's really helpful to use a multi-channel approach. When we're trying to get learning to stick in the long-term memory, it's very helpful to, to think about different ways in which we might represent the information we're trying to learn. So they could represent it visually, they could do a mind map or a flow chart or something like that. They could also represent it in an auditory fashion. So they might listen to a podcast or record a podcast or a vlog. Um, there's lots of different resources available in the handout that they will have brought home, hopefully with them after the session today. Um, so you've got exemplars of different revision methods that they could use. So if they're unsure about how to, for example, create a mind map or how to create a set of Cornell notes, for example, there's exemplars in there that you can have a look at with them. Um, so there's lots of resources available to support them. The other thing that we, that we know from recent research into memory for learning is that when young people are in what's classed as a high stakes testing environment, they don't do as well as they might if the pressure doesn't feel to be so great. So um, low stakes quizzing is something that really helps in terms of improving retention and improving recall. Low stakes, as in not a big scary test, just hopefully a, a fun quiz, as fun as it can be anyway if you're revising. Um, in the pack that your young person has, there are some things called challenge grids. So they could create a challenge grid, and we've, we've talked about how to do that at school today. They could create a challenge grid on a topic um, for a friend, they could test each other or for themselves. There's some great online quizzing software that they could use as well, the vast majority of which um, is free for them to use. So they could create a quiz in Kahoot or in Quizlet. Um, I would really recommend that young people have a study buddy as well, just to, to try and cut down on that sort of feeling of isolation when they're revising. Um, so if they buddy up with a friend, they could take a topic each and each one of them could create um, an online quiz for their topic and then they could test each other. Um, so there are lots of ways of, of making revision perhaps a bit more palatable um, and, and that's that's certainly one of them. There's some great software for, to create for things like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, for example, that you can easily download for free. I've done that myself recently. Um, so you could you know, get them to create increasingly difficult and challenging questions for particular topics um, and then test them out on, on you or on, on, on a friend and so forth. Um, so the key things really are thinking about different multi-channel approaches, re-representing the same information in lots of different ways, testing themselves and each other regularly on what they've learned. Um, if they're finding that they don't get everything right, that's absolutely fine. The key is to say, right, okay, what went wrong? Why did it go wrong? Let's try a different approach and practice that until I can get it right, rather than thinking, oh, I got it wrong, I'm never going to get it right. I just haven't got it right yet. I need to change my approach. And obviously, if they are getting stuck and they can't resolve it themselves, talk to one of the teachers. The teachers are so keen to help and they are absolutely ready to support, to support your child. Um, Okay, and 
obviously what we're covering here are study skills. So we've called it a study skills session today. And these are skills that won't just stand them in good stead over the next few weeks, but if they're going to sixth form or to college, if they end up going to university, all of these things are going to be useful then because good revision is good revision, whether it's for GCSE or A-level or university level. Those techniques and that research around memory for learning will continue to be helpful to them throughout their academic lives. Um, and I think the big message really is about balance. As we've said, this is going to be a number of weeks of ongoing assessment. Teachers need to provide a portfolio of evidence to support the best fit grade they arrive at for each pupil. And pupils just need to be working steadily and consistently, doing the best they can, but also balancing that against time to, to decompress, to see their friends and to have things to look forward to. Um, I know that Kundal have got all sorts of fantastically exciting things for pupils to look forward to at the end of the summer term. Um, and although it, it seems perhaps in their mind a long way away, that will be here before we know it. So this is probably the last time that I will see you as Thornton parents. All I can say now is I, I wish you all the best of luck and the very best of luck to your, your young people and um, look after yourselves and stay safe. Bye for now.